Hello guys, it's Jenny and welcome to the special episode of Koi68 TV today. We call it Crypto Around the World. Today I invited some of my friends and partners from 10 different countries around the world. I will ask them some questions regarding to the cryptocurrency market and the blockchain industry within their nations. So let's jump right into it. Alright, hi and thank you so much for joining our interview today. So before we start, can you give a short introduction of who you are and where you're from, please? Uh, my name is Yuan Kim. I am the co-founder of KSM Startup. Originally, I'm from uh, South Korea. So my name is Phil and um, I'm currently uh, living in China and currently I'm working as one of the co-founders for a project named Phantom Protocol. Hello guys, uh, my name is Tim. Uh, I come from Taiwan. I have a Taiwanese name called Chunxie, as you guys can see on the screen right here. Uh, I have been living here for the most part of my life. So my name is Mark Stanwick. I am the co-founder of Avalanche. We are an uh, Avalanche specific launch pad and ecosystem accelerator. And I am based in Los Angeles, California. I'm Pat and I'm from the Philippines. I'm uh, Efe, uh, I'm senior partner of Mohabit.com. So this is Pick, uh, I'm from Singapore. Uh, previously I was working in a VC uh, in the crypto space. Currently I'm advising a couple of projects in the space. So my name's Ben and I'm from Australia. So my name is Lars, um, I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I'm the, I'm the co-founder of Evangelion. I'm Zane, I come from Vietnam, um, a South Asian uh, country. Uh, also a pretty uh, active market in the crypto space. Cool, thank you. So first of all, I would love to ask about the policy. So what is the attitude of your government towards cryptocurrency? Are they friendly, neutral, or they're a bit negative about this field? So to kind of combat this, South Korea has um, a few different regulations that does make things quite difficult, but I wouldn't see that as um, some people say, oh, you know, the South Korean government policy is actually you know, hostile towards crypto. I don't see that as hostility. I just see that as they're trying to maintain their neutrality to control an asset that is increasingly more popular. I think overall the um, Chinese government is uh, friendly towards blockchain and cryptocurrency overall, but everything has um, there is a progression for things to uh, move forward towards their uh, giving more warnings and uh, more cautions towards people who's trying to engage with the crypto market, cryptocurrency market. So overall, I can see that the overall idea of the mark of the asset of this kind of asset in this country has been pro progressing, and combined with that, it still follows the overall. Uh, nature and overall principle of this country that everything, all the assets, all the financial assets in this country needs to provide for a stable um, economy and stable society. Yes. So I think like compared to mainland China, uh, which are very conservative about crypto, I think like Taiwan has a like neutral to positive attitude towards cryptocurrency. Right now, uh, the Central Bank of the Philippines really do grant crypto related projects, um, you know, the license to be operating in here. But the process is kind of slow. And I would say like the government is quite neutral. Um, they're, they're open to it, but then like they really don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, I think it's um, uh, neutral to negative at this point. So it speaks to, um, I think, a, a level of uh, uncertainty and fear on the, on, the, on the part of the regulators as to kind of like what to do and they don't want to lose control. But on the other hand, you have plenty of people here too that see the potential. So it, it, it's pretty mixed. It's certainly not super friendly though. Yeah, I would say that Singapore is rather friendly towards uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, our authority is building a really um, positive and healthy uh, environment for the cryptocurrency industry. Yeah. But I'd say the Australian government is not is more on the neutral side and they're open to it, but they're still relatively cautious about um, cryptocurrency as a whole because it's so new. Regarding cryptocurrencies, I think it's it's somewhat friendly, somewhat neutral. Um, the main reason is that it's not really regulated at the moment. Overall, uh, it's, it's friendly. Uh, and uh, also, uh, the, at the beginning of this year, um, the government also issued a circulate 
that you know like uh, encourage the enterprise to get into blockchain using blockchain technology to like uh, to manufacture or like things like that you know like take advantage of the uh, the blockchain technology to make you know like everything transparent uh, make you know like the a better economy and that is a very like positive sign from the government of Vietnam. That's interesting. So let's change to the adoption. How does the crypto adoption currently look in your country? And if you have a chance to guess, so what percentage of your country's population would you estimate to own or to be involved with cryptocurrency? Now in, in South Korea, you know, everyone is aware of, of cryptocurrency. You would not meet anyone who is not aware of Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, you know, Ripple, Doge, you know, these kind of coins. In terms of the actual percentage, I would say that, I mean, of course, around like 90% are aware of crypto in terms of who actually actively invests. I would estimate between 20 to 25%, maybe maximum 30% um, are, are actively investing. So I think in China, first of all, um, the official mass adoption will, will really be related to the technology first. So here, what you'll first hear is blockchain technology. You get uh, Alibaba, you get Tencent, and you get a lot of the government um, agencies adopting technology. And you can see the uh, um, central bank digital currency uh, CBDC uh, coming out um, and it's being very game, already being adopted in several regions in China right now. So you can see that the technology first is being adopted on a very wide basis. Um, looking at the history in China, the dominant force in China right now is actually still the um, actually a while before still the um, mining area, the Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency mining area. So they will consider like crypto assets at, as like gambling tool. Uh, however, like a recent research carried out that they got like 2 million crypto users uh, in Taiwan, including like MyCoin. Uh, MyCoin is like the biggest exchange in Taiwan and its competitors. Uh, 2 million in Taiwan, which means like not even 10% of the population is into crypto. So I think like that's quite low penetration rate comparing to other countries in Asia. Crypto adoption, I would say is still in its very early age. Um, generally, you really wouldn't see any establishments here accepting crypto. Um, but crypto is one of these things that when you're in it, feels very big and it feels like everyone knows. And then you step just right outside of it and you realize like not a lot of people know what you're talking about. Um, so I would think the percentage of, of, of you know, United States citizens that own crypto, uh, maybe 5% less. I, you know, I don't know. It, it, I think it's definitely less than 10 uh, Turkey is in the fourth place uh, on crypto usage after Nigeria, Vietnam and Philippines. So it's around 15% uh, and we are always on top of big exchanges, on top of top three of big exchanges uh, like Binance or Huobi or OKX uh, or FTX, especially younger generation is uh, very eager to meet uh, with crypto and uh, do transactions uh, and you know, just uh, they're, they're trying to decentralize everything. I think fortunately for me, I actually came across a survey uh, recently. So they actually conducted a rich survey to find out how many Singaporeans are actually holding cryptocurrency in one way or another. So I think the survey result was suggested that there are uh, two out of three Singaporeans actually own cryptocurrency. And majority of these holders are young adults between 25 to 34 years old. So in, in my age group as well. And adoption in Singapore is really prevalent. So traditionally in Australia, um, you know, stocks, mining and property investment is uh, largely the, the, the traditional means of investment in Australia. So um, most people in Australia, the Australian dream is to save up enough money to get to a stage where you can put a deposit on your home um, and get a mortgage and then pay it off, um, which is very, very different to what uh, crypto investment is um, because of its volatility uh, and whatnot as well. So there's, there's, that bit, there's been that lag um, in adoption within Australia. Uh, I think if I had to guess, it will be about like 5% um, of the population, three to 5%, which should put it around like three to 500,000 people in the Netherlands um, that are actually working with the cryptocurrencies. Um, I don't know if that's a lot compared to other countries. I think Europe is a little bit lower in terms of the adoption anyway, because we have 
um, a lot more access to the financial systems um, than in, in other emerging countries um, like now in El Salvador and Venezuela where they just use Bitcoin a lot more as, as like a legal tender as well. So I think the ad adoption rate is still quite low, um, but we're working on it. If, uh, if I mentioned about like blockchain and crypto of Vietnam of four or five years ago, it may be just like spe speculation. Uh, people just buy and wish the coin to like go off. But right now, uh, uh, in 2021, we have like um, people, they not just like buy the coin, they actually use the crypto product. They actually use DeFi protocol. Uh, that's why they rank the top in terms of the DeFi adoption. Uh, in Vietnam, people not just using the DeFi protocol on Ethereum, they use uh, all the, the protocol in different uh, like platform, uh, Solana, uh, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, Phantom, Near, yeah, a lot of them. How about the trending topics? So what is the most trending topics regarding crypto at the moment? Still the most trendy topics in South Korea are, you know, just Bitcoin prices, Ethereum prices. Uh, specifically, so one is definitely NFTs. Uh, secondly, the gamification. Our population is not that into crypto, so I think like the trend will be like Bitcoin, Ethereum. Those are very basic trend, and also DeFi. NFT hasn't been so popular here in the country because, as you, as I said before, people are still very speculate. Axie Infinity is quite popular here. People here like to play games. Like mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, Filipinos are really into it, playing games on their mobile phones. And that's what that's the one thing that really made Axie a hit is because it's mobile friendly. So people can play it on their phones, which is um, really important. And people here are, mo are, are most of the time mobile. And also probably because of the, you know, the opportunity to earn, like the pandemic has really changed a lot of views of people when it comes to like income, like opportunities to earn so i feel like they see crypto as another avenue for them to be you know putting their investments in or um, having a chance to earn so yeah <laughs> DeFi, nft nft's kind of taken over now you're seeing nft start to blend into DeFi. you know that's what crypto does we just mesh things together once they're popular as I said before, our young generation is eager uh, and also curious about crypto. And after uh, last summer's DeFi madness, now they are minting and buying some NFTs and they are very active on uh, OpenSea or uh, platforms like that. Uh, so it's easily NFTs for now. Let, let's see uh, what will be next. Yeah, I think the trending topic in Singapore is pretty much aligned with the whole world. So definitely NFT. But yeah, I think NFTs and NFT gaming is also a huge trend uh, in Australia at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, gaming, I think NFT gaming now is, is very hot everywhere. Um, but I, I think the main topics really are still like the regulation in terms of the, uh, the exchanges. Um, also because we have to work with the AML laws and, and in the European Union, um, the Netherlands have to, um, you know, follow the rules there, the regulations from the European Union too. And I think the NFT gaming is not as hot in, in the Netherlands as in, in Asia as for, from what I've seen so far. Uh, blockchain gaming. Uh, so you guys may know that, you know, like X Infinity, they are um, a uh, uh, Vietnamese based team. Uh, so after this is set up uh, X, um, you know, it's, it's pretty inspired a lot of like, uh, project team in Vietnam, dev team, developer in Vietnam, they start like uh, building more game. Yeah. And uh, uh, the people here are also, uh, they learn very fast about gaming. Uh, they not only um, like just buy the token of the game, the government token, they actually play the game and, you know, like support it directly to the game. Yeah. So let's talk about the challenges. So what are the current challenges that need to be addressed within the crypto sphere in your country? The regulation. Uh, as well as that, like the government recently has released some rules relating to the token offerings, um, which only allow like professional investors, not individual investors to join in. And even with the professional investor, they can actually join in with like a max range of 10,000 USD. Yeah, so I feel like it's probably the same challenge that um, every other country faces. 
um, and we hear it over over and over again um, in the news and in media and whatnot. It's all it's all the same thing. It's it's really just regulation, regulation, regulation. For example, the DeFi protocol, um, we cannot say that you know it's it's it's, it's popular because uh, the UI is not like friendly to all the people. Uh, of course, the most of the, the Vietnamese people, if they are, they they don't know anything about like crypto, um, they familiar with like banking service. Um, of course, they cannot trust some like some code or some UI, yeah, some some like things like uh, on the internet like this. So uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to educate them, and I, I think it's 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 a, it's a long journey. Uh, we we have to go if we want crypto and blockchain to. Uh, you know, like uh, become something mass adoption in Vietnam market. Would you like to share any special or unique details regarding cryptocurrency in your country? It's that people are really hungry for new investment opportunities. So when you see a project surviving and dropping in the Korean market, you can also kind of measure that they have enough money to survive because South Korean regulation does require you to pay a lot of money to get the license. Uh, there are many, many Bitcoin ATMs anywhere in this country, oh, wow. which means like you can find it in the convenience store. Uh, there are about like 10,000 of them in across Taiwan, uh, including like 7-Eleven, Family Mart. So buying and selling coins in Taiwan is very simple. If you do want to get like the Philippine market to capture the Philippine market, I think we're all about being really mobile. Um, we don't like uh, like less complicated stuff because most of the people here are really using their phones so for mass adoption or you know to get the wider pie of the philippine market you should really have like um mobile uh, versions i would say a big part of the crypto culture here is the is the nft the art you know you have a lot of even uh, art galleries here in los angeles that are um, doing like NFT gallery showings and you know I, I know some people personally that are building um, ways for art galleries to install like uh, you know on-chain sort of frames in their walls and things like that like it's that you know the, the art the creative process because I'm also in Los Angeles so a lot of musicians a lot of artists um, and that and 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 uh, the NFT stuff and, and what it allows um, creators to do and kind of take back, right, from the music industry. Yeah, what you mentioned about the ATMs, we have that more in Eastern Europe, which is quite cool because when I travel around there, um, I saw them quite often. Um, I don't really see them in, in the Netherlands, um, but what I think is quite cool is that the government is actually backing a lot of the, the projects um, in terms of funding, like I said, um, to also do more research into the technology itself at university. So, I think that that is, I think, a special or unique um, thing about the Netherlands that they're trying to be front runners in this industry. That's pretty cool. So for now, I show you a short video clip about the Vietnamese cryptocurrency market. And yeah, please enjoy the video and let me know what your thoughts are after watching this. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just you just blew my mind. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of top projects, a huge representation of crypto in Vietnam. Uh, that that's very cool. It makes me it makes me rethink some of my strategy around the priorities of international communities when we're when we're building stuff. That's that's crazy. It's really impressive. Vietnam loves crypto.
and I'm very glad that uh, I have some partners like you, like Kairos Ventures, and I'm, I'm really proud of it because uh, you are doing a, an amazing job, uh, not just for yourself, you, for your people. We have actually engaged a lot of uh, your help in helping the bridging, bridging projects to the Vietnamese community and market. And we have always seen, you know, the value add that uh, Kairos brings to the partners. So we know that the Vietnamese community is really important to set definitely uh, if projects want to consider a market to go to, Vietnam is definitely the way to go. Yeah. For you guys to reach that level, I think you're doing something amazing over there and there's just so many, um, you know, energy and passion going on in Vietnam about crypto and yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I, I think you guys should keep it up and I think and I hope you will surpass other countries. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you so much for your kind words and yeah, thank you for your time today as well for joining our special episode with Coin68 TV and that's our pleasure to have all of you here. And thank you so much guys for watching this video today. Hopefully you've learned something useful today through our guest insights on the cryptocurrency market around the world. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for support. I will see you in the next video of Coin68 TV. Thank you so much and bye!